The purpose of this video is to teach you the steps of the carbon cycle. When it comes to the carbon cycle, there are two main things that you have to know. There are either processes that move carbon or processes that store carbon. The first thing we're going to talk about are the different things that store carbon. The first and probably most important one is the carbon dioxide that's stored in the atmosphere. People talk a lot about this. They say, you know, are the fossil fuels that we're using up affecting the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere? Is that affecting global warming? Things like that. Uh, we'll get into that stuff more in class. For right now, it's most important to know, though, that uh, carbon dioxide is stored in the atmosphere very prevalently. The other place a lot of it is stored is actually in the ocean. This is always kind of interesting because it's something that no one really talks about, but more carbon dioxide is stored there than is stored in the atmosphere, and we're actually even less sure about the impact that carbon dioxide is having on the ocean than we are about the impact it's having on the atmosphere. So it's just an interesting thing there that uh, those are our two main storage locations. The other ones are plants and animals. If you think that all plants are going through the process of photosynthesis, which is allowing them to take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, use that in the combination of sunlight and water in order to make energy, and then the animals are consuming the carbon compounds from the plants, whether it be directly, in the case of this guy, which would be a primary consumer, or something further up the food chain, a secondary or a tertiary consumer that's maybe eating one of these guys. Another big place that carbon compounds are stored are in fossil fuels underneath the ground. This is where we get this idea of we've got all this carbon that was slowly sequestered there, it was slowly stored in these fossil fuels over millions of years, and now we're releasing that stuff within just a few decades. So if you just think about it that way, it's, it's hard to imagine that that carbon dioxide isn't having some kind of drastic impact on the atmosphere. Another thing that people forget when it comes to storage locations is not just the ocean, but also the things in the ocean. There are producers and consumers in the ocean, just as there are on land, so the animals and then like the algae and other things that are in the ocean, and some plants, uh, also account for some of the carbon. The other processes that you need to be aware of are the things that are moving carbon. We talked about photosynthesis a little bit in class. Remember, this is taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. It's making it available to plants and therefore making it available to animals. Feeding is another process that's moving carbon. This is the way that the animals are getting the carbon that they need from the plants. Respiration is what happens when plants and animals use the energy that's stored in those carbon compounds. As they use that energy, some of that energy then gets released back up to the atmosphere. We'll spend an entire chapter on this process of respiration, but for now all you have to know is that it's basically the opposite of photosynthesis. Animals are eating carbon compounds from plants or other animals, and they're releasing carbon dioxide and then energy as well. The energy is what they actually need from those things that they're eating. Another process that's moving the carbon is decomposition. So let's say our poor little elk here dies and he's decomposed and he becomes part of the ground. Um, deposition is one of the geologic processes that you probably learned last year in Earth and Space. As things from the surface get covered up slowly, they're deposited deep under the Earth. Under the Earth, they're exposed to intense heat and pressure. That heat and pressure is what causes the fossil fuels to form. Another process that involves moving carbon is human activity. So we are then taking those fossil fuels out of the ground, we're burning them for energy. Um, following along on the other side of the diagram here, you have photosynthesis and respiration in aquatic ecosystems as well. Nothing really changes there. Same thing with deposition and feeding. So if you understand the concepts from the terrestrial ecosystems, the ones on land over here, then the aquatic ecosystems are pretty much the same. Uh, the other two that we still have to talk about are uplift, which is sort of like the opposite of deposition. This would be at a plate boundary when things are now coming up, back, uh, returning to the surface. Ultimately, this could end up with volcanic activity if you're in the right area. Uh, volcanic activity actually puts a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So that's going to be one of our most prevalent things that are actually moving carbon compounds on the planet. Um, the last one is one you may not have thought about, although this is another sort of recycled one from last year, is the idea of erosion. So erosion is going to be moving topsoil and other things on land. So for example, if you've got 
this entire like mountain that makes up the volcano. As it rains down on the mountain, some of that will be eroded into the water source. So that's another way that carbon is moving around on the planet. So just a little reminder, kind of made you a key up here at the top. The things that are circled in red, those are the different places that carbon is stored. So those are our storage locations. The blue circles are movement. So these are processes that actually move carbon around through the carbon cycle. I hope this helped make the steps of the carbon cycle a little bit more clear for you. Uh, in class, we'll actually practice using this almost like a maze so you can move your way through the uh, different steps of the carbon cycle. Uh, the one last thing I want to mention is actually this one right here in the ocean. What this is showing is carbon dioxide actually being dissolved from the atmosphere into the ocean and this is it evaporating out of the ocean and returning back to the atmosphere. So these are two that I wish your book had put um, you know, some markers on there to explain to you what exactly those steps are showing. But um, other than that, this one is pretty straightforward. If you remember, there's ways that it's stored and ways that carbon is moved. That's ultimately the key to this process. As always, thank you for watching.